Alrighty, everybody, we got done finishing our exterior walls in the last video. <clears throat> We're going to put a floor slab, a ground level floor slab in here. This is actually a pretty simple thing. Uh, we're going to, uh, for those of you who remember our basic instructions, what we did in uh, class uh, the previous week, um, I'm not going to go into that much detail, you know, doing the brick pocket and dropping the brick further than the edge of slab and all those things. I'm not going to worry about any of that. This is going to be really basic. It's also not going to be real, but hey, this is a class assignment. Uh, so here I am. I'm looking at my ground floor plan, and I'm going to come to my architecture tab, and I'm going to click on floor. And this places me in what's called sketch mode. <clears throat> now, what I'm not going to do is I'm not going to use this generic 12-inch floor. But the floor that I want to place, I actually don't have. I want to put a 4-inch concrete floor, a floor slab in here, and I don't have that available. So I'm going to click Edit Type on my generic floor, 12-inch uh, floor. Click on Duplicate and say 4-inch concrete slab. <clears throat> So far, so good. So this way, any changes that I make here are not going to be reflected in that 12-inch generic floor. Uh, on structure, come over here, click Edit. Uh, for this section right here, this is not uh, a by category material. I'm going to change this. <clears throat> and I'm going to type in C-O-N-C just to filter everything out. I want concrete cast in place gray concrete. <clears throat> Excuse me. Now, in my material browser, I do want to make one additional change, and that's over here to the surface pattern. I'm going to change the color of it. I'm going to change the color to this medium gray right here. The reason is, is when you have a concrete uh, stipple pattern on the surface of your floor, it tends to get kind of distracting. So I just want to make it gray so we're still communicating that it's concrete, but we're doing it in, in not quite in such an intense way. All right, so concrete, cast in place gray. We've modified the material. So anytime we use this particular material anywhere in the project, it will contain this modification. Okay, so we're done there. Click OK. Okay, so we're concrete, cast in place gray, so we got that part right. But the thickness we need to change to 4 inches. Remember, Revit understands the differences between feet and inches, but just by using a space. So you can say 0, space, 4. If you don't want to do that, you can actually type 4 inches. It all amounts to the same thing. Or if you want to get really tricky, you can type 0 0.333 feet, and it'll come out, wow, almost exactly right. 0 0.3334. Let's try that. There we go. <clears throat> that would make the difference. So it understands decimal feet as well. Not that any of you guys would really monkey with that too much, because I don't. I just want you to know it's there. Click OK. Okay, so now we're actually dealing with a 4-inch thick concrete slab. And now here I am. I'm going to begin drawing my boundary line, and I'm just going to click on Drawing a Line. I'm going to zoom in, and I'm going to draw right on the outside edge of the entire building. Nothing real fancy. I'm not trying to hover tab on top of anything. I'm not trying to get any defining line on the inside of the wall. None of that. There we go. So we're just working our way around the perimeter of the entire building. Come on. This part might be a little tricky because there's actually nothing to snap onto. So I'm just going to click out here. And I'm going to zoom. I went the wrong way. There we go. I'm going to meet back up. And it's all because there's not a pretty corner to end on right there where the storefront corner is. I haven't modified the storefront where it actually fixes the, uh, the corner condition. This is not how a real storefront volume would take place. You can see I left these lines of overlapping. <clears throat> now, if I try to finish now by clicking uh, the green checkbox and finish the sketch mode, I'll get this lines cannot intersect each other. I'm getting this error message because these lines are intersecting. This particular command, anytime you're in sketch mode and you're expected to make a closed loop, uh, all the points need to come together. So I'll click on continue because I need to modify this. I'll come up over here to my trim extended to corner. And I will click on the line I want to modify on the side of that line I want to keep. So I'll click here and then here. And you can see it works just like the fillet command in AutoCAD. Now I do want to show this to you. I'm going to use my grips just to stretch one and make it longer than it needs to be. 
We stretch the other one and make it shorter than it needs to be. This command will work in this condition as well. So I can click on the line on the, click on the line I want to modify on the side I want to keep, or click on the line that you want to modify on the side you wish to extend. So it will still clean this end up. Oh goodness, there we go. So there it is. And now that I've made that modification, I can click on edit sketch mode, and there is my finished floor plan or my finished slab. Ta-da! There we go. All right. So that's that's creating a floor slab. This is a ground floor slab. In the next video, we will create the floor assembly for the second level. So we'll see you guys in a minute.